Hey, what's up? Today we're gonna talk about the skate punk of the late 90s and early 2000s. This was a big factor for me because I was growing up in San Diego in the late 90s and early 2000s when this music really grew up and it was an absolute craze down there. A lot of people like myself were actually collecting these 411 video magazines from the late 90s, early 2000s that were uh, VHS tapes that you'd watch and they'd have all the newest skate punk on them. And a lot of this ended up filtering into the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games, and the soundtracks to those became extremely popular, not only in Southern California, the epicenter for skate culture and punk rock, but the rest of the country. So now all these people across the country and really the world are able to hear these bands like No Effects, Bad Religion, Descendants, and Rancid. They would go out and tour together with Vans Warp Tour, and these were seeing massive, massive tens, hundreds of thousands of people go out to these shows. The cool thing is they were able to take the speed and a lot of the chord progressions from the bands in the 80s, the hardcore bands, and ended up taking it and adding pop elements to it. So if you listen to a band like No Effects, they're playing extremely loud, very aggressive, very fast, but they have these hooks. So now punk was finding its voice in the mainstream, and this led to a lot of the crossover that eventually happened with Green Day and Blink-182. All right, let's take a look at some of the techniques and work through these exercises together so we can get a better understanding of this skate punk, pop punk crossover. So the riff that I actually have is basically C, power chord, G power chord, A power chord, F power chord. We're in the key of C major here. Here are the chords. So once again, we're playing power chords, but they're implying more than that. They're implying triads. So we're in the key of C major, which is a one major chord, a five major chord, a six minor chord, and a four major chord. So even though we're playing only root and fifth, those are implied just due to the structure of the major scale. So all the chugging that's happening in between the accented chords is just the lowest note, the root note of the chord. So watch what I mean by that. I'm gonna just play the C chord at a medium tempo so you can see what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So the reason for that is when you're playing at such a fast tempo, if you're actually muting all those ticka tickas in between with the full three notes of the chord, there's no way you can play it with that speed. It's gonna end up sounding all jumbled and it's gonna sound terrible. So what you're doing is you're reducing it to just the bass note in order to get that percussive nature of the palm muting. So the accents are actually So all those notes in between the accents are happening on just the A string, for instance. And my recommendation would be to play that just in the C chord, get it up to the tempo of 175. Don't start there. Maybe start at 140, 135, and move up in increments of five beats per minute. This is usually how I do it, especially at such a fast tempo. So start at 135, 140, and work your way up slowly. If you're already playing it really cleanly, you can move up quicker, but make your way there gradually. If you try to play above your proficiency, it is only going to hurt you in the long run. So let's do that same thing, and now we're gonna add the G chord. We're gonna go back and forth. Here we go. Two, three, four. So once you get that down, you're now used to moving from your fifth string power chord, the C, down to your sixth string power chord, the G. If you can get that transition, that's really the hardest part here, because now all your other power chords, the A and the F, are just sixth string. You're just moving a couple frets up, and four frets down, and that's all you got. So really most of the work is happening in the right hand, again, with a lot of these punk rock styles. I'm gonna play it at a slower tempo and then a faster tempo so you can hear both. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Here it is at a fast tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Remember to keep your right wrist loose. If you lock up and try to play from your elbow, there's no way that you can play at this tempo. If you haven't played a lot of fast skate punk before or fast punk rock in general, this beat might sound really odd to you and kind of smash together. So just work with it, think slowly, and try to practice and work your way up to the speed and you should be playing it cleanly in no time. So with a lot of these really fast punk styles, there isn't a lot of lead playing. It would be extremely hard to solo at this fast of a tempo. You'd have to be a ridiculous virtuoso to even keep up at all. So what ends up happening is the use of octaves. These are sort of used as a device for parts, but also melodies that would function as possibly a solo if you played it a couple octaves up. So here's an example of that. And a lot of what I'm doing here is very simple. I'm landing on the thirds of the chord and then using passing tones to get between them. When I'm playing over the first chord C, I play an E octave like this. And then I walk down, I go to the C, the root, and then go right to the third of the next chord. So I play a B over the G chord. Here's the octaves over C. Now we're gonna get to the G chord. I'm gonna play a B octave. Then I'm gonna go up to a D note and walk down to the C, which is gonna be the third of A, the minor third of A. So far we have this, and I'm gonna to try to play the bass notes as I'm playing it so you can hear in context. Then I move up to the root of the F chord and then play the two of the F chord. So I move up to F when we hit it. And then the phrase starts over. So this is what it sounds like with just the octaves. You're gonna to have to imply the chords in your head. That's the first half. Now the second half of this is the exact same until we get to the F chord. Then I play this. So I start on the third of F major. I move to the two. So instead of going F to G, now we're going A to G over that F chord. That's the only change. I'm gonna play the entire phrase a little bit slower than it is so you can hear it. One, two, three, four. All right, here we have exercise number three. I really like this one because it is sort of a transitional style of riff. At this speed, if it was a different drum beat, it could almost function as a metal riff. A lot of bands like Iron Maiden or possibly even early Avenged Sevenfold would have something very similar to this, except they'd probably play it in a fully minor key. These muted figures like this that outline the chords that we're playing end up being really effective at such fast tempos. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using the root note of each of the chords as sort of the bass note and then hitting notes on the adjacent string above to imply a melody. I'm actually starting on the thirds that are on the adjacent string to the root of the chord we're playing. What I mean by that is I start on the E note over the C chord and what I do is play this. I'll play it at a slow tempo. One, two, three, four. So basically what's happening here is the melody note is moving from a third to a four and back to a three. So really in your head, you hear this. Then we do the exact same thing over the G chord. Because once again, it's a major chord. We play a major third, suss it, go back. Then we move to A minor. We have the minor third. Then we move up to the fifth. So we're actually doing a slightly different melody on top. Over the A, we have a C, a E, and then a D. So it sounds like this. Then we move down to our F chord, and we start with an open A, which is a third over an F, and then we play this cool little figure that gives it a Lydian sound. We have our sharp four in there, which I really love, and it sounds like this. 
and then the figure starts over. So I'm gonna play it at a medium tempo all the way through. One, two, three, four. Let's play it closer to the tempo of the actual exercise. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we've basically got four simple chords here and we're utilizing our palm muting, our accents, and also outlining the chords with melodies to find something that is melodically interesting without just playing power chords over and over and over again. All right, so now it's time to jam. I'm gonna start it out with the main power chord riff and then I'm gonna hand it off to you. I'll let you know as you're about to play what to play. All right, here we go. Your turn. I'm gonna play the octaves. Your turn. I'm gonna play exercise three. Your turn. Here we go, last chord. Once again, these styles are very fast and they might not seem applicable to a lot of other genres, but you actually have to learn a lot of basic techniques that really transfer over and also learn how to write melodies at breakneck tempos. So you have to pare it down to the simplest idea you can think of, which I think is very advantageous as you begin to write your own songs and your own melodies. Are you looking for a structured way to learn rock guitar? Hey, I'm Joshua Ray Gooch, and welcome to the Rock Learning Pathway at Pickup Music. This program is the most structured way to learn rock guitar. You'll be able to play must-know riffs and licks, you'll know how to craft your tone across various rock genres, and you can think of this as a bit of a history course, where we will discuss the family tree of rock and make connections from decade to decade. This learning pathway has six grades. Each grade has daily lessons with play-along exercises, performances where we have some awesome backing tracks for you to jam along with, and here you'll have an opportunity to upload a video of yourself for personalized feedback. If you really commit to the daily lessons and apply the techniques that I show you, I promise that you will see incredible progress and develop a solid foundation in rock guitar. Get your membership at pickupmusic.com. Let's get started.